Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Anomaly. It's by Starling Games, and it's for two to four players. This takes about mm, 60 minutes to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game Anomaly, you are playing on the Torres Research Facility. You are students trapped aboard this facility, which is now under quarantine. Unfortunately, there is a secret entity of unknown origin tracking and hunting you down. You as the students must also try and figure out where it is and attempt to destroy it before it defeats you. Players will play in turn order, going back and forth between students and alien, attempting to take actions and destroy each other. The player or players who are eliminated first will then make the winner occur which is either going to be the alien or the students in which case the game will end will you survive on the tourist station as the students or will you track and hunt the students down in time to defeat them before you run out of food as the anomaly anyway let's go and take a look down below at the game anomaly and i'll show you how to play so here we have a four player setup for the game anomaly and everything included so let's go over everything First of all, there are player markers, which will indicate either red, green, or orange, and you'll use these guys on your hidden player boards, which are behind your player board screens. There's also the anomaly tokens, which can be used for anybody, to try and figure out where the anomaly and or any of the players are on this board here, utilizing the screen that is behind your shield. There's a deck of action cards that each player is going to get, depending on the number of players, whether it be seven for a two-player game, four for a three-player, and three for a four-player game. You will then shuffle this deck and deal out for each number of players the number of cards associated with the player count. Additionally, there are nine different types of cards, and these cards are basically associated with the symbols on the board. This will indicate where players are somewhat located on the board, helping the anomaly track them. And as players move, these symbols will be replaced, showing the new locations that they potentially are at. So for instance, this player here is definitely on one of those symbols, so it's likely that they are either here, 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 or here, one of these four spaces. And the same would go for this symbol as well as this symbol as well. This is the main board of the game, where players and Anomaly is going to be basically be tracking each other to try and defeat each other. And on the board, you're going to have these little uh, tubes here, or these little gas canisters, which the Anomaly will attempt to feed off of to gain health throughout the game, and the students will attempt to destroy to stop the Anomaly from feeding off of them to gain the health. These are the radiation tokens. At the end of every round, they'll be flipped over, and you will read the uh, bottom of it, which will say where the radiation is going to go to based on the lowest number. Over here is the tracker, which has the student's health and the anomaly's health. The student's health will always start on the far right-hand side, and the anomaly will start on the far left. The middle will indicate the last spot on the board they have to go to in order to be... Uh, extinguished so if they ever get to that very middle area that will end that specific team's run of the game and the other team will win everybody's going to get their own shield to hide their own hidden board including the anomaly as well as of course their player marker and the location in which they're going to be placing that at the beginning of the game where they start so in this case this player is going to start here and no one will know that but that player but they will have to place a card based on the symbol they are located in so for instance the location they are currently at if you look at this this little player board here it shows it has the wrench it has this like, gray symbol it has a fire symbol when you choose to place that as your starting location you have to choose one of those three symbols to indicate to the anomaly where you may or may not be on the board and you cannot lie so in this case we have shown the wrench symbol which indicates that they are of course in one of the four areas with the wrenches so these four areas here Every player will do that. The Anomaly, however, will choose their own location as well, but does not need to uh, have any of these cards to show the players where the Anomaly is at. You're going to have to just simply find them on your own. These extra tokens are for when players, are, players or the Anomaly are revealed on the board. You're simply going to place them there to show that they're revealed, whether the Anomaly is choosing to feed, a player simply attacks the Anomaly, or the Anomaly is able to hurt the players in some way. Uh, additionally, there's going to be these little tokens here in front of the Anomaly's board, which are mutations, and as the Anomaly gains mutations, they're going to flip them over to indicate they now have that specific ability. Mutations last until the end of the game, and provide some benefit to the Anomaly, provided that they have it unlocked. These are action tokens, and the Anomaly is always going to have three, and they'll be using these as they go from round to round uh, in certain ways. There's basic actions, and of course there's going to be the more advanced actions, depending on if the Anomaly has cards, and the same will be said for these students here. 
To begin the game, the students will always start first, and they're basically going to be going back and forth. The students will take their turn, one of them will take an action with using the cards, then the anomaly will have a chance to use one of their tokens or not, and then back to the students. The round will end when there's only two cards collectively left between all of the students, and when the anomaly has taken all three of their action tokens and utilized them. At that point, the round will end, all the students will get their cards back to the maximum hand size they have, which in this case is three, the anomaly will get their tokens back, then you'll check to see if anybody gets irradiated based on this radiation board here, and then we'll flip over new radiation to kind of increase the amount of radiated area on the board, then the students will start once again. So that's the basic idea. Uh, you can go ahead and give the anomaly at least one of every single one of these players uh, tokens so that they can go ahead and try and track the players. And you can kind of take these when you need them, basically. These will be used throughout the game, taking them. If any decks run out, you're going to simply shuffle them. So let's go ahead and talk first about the students and what they can do. If you look on the student's board, it will tell you the student actions. And in general, you're going to be able to move or uh, track. When you move, you're simply going to select a location on your player board. So we'll just go ahead and get this a little closer here. And you're gonna to move to an adjacent space provided there's an area that's open. So for instance, if I wanna move from here to here, I will then move this card down and then I'm going to select a icon that has the same, has an icon that shares a type from the location you moved on to. So in this case, I went to a wrench and then I moved to a space that has a wrench fire and this gray symbol. So I chose the fire to place out in the front. That way the anomaly knows that the original location I was on had the wrench and the next location I was on has the fire. When you choose to do a basic action with a student, you're gonna take one of these cards from your hand and discard it and then not use it basically. That counts as one of your actions. Basic actions never require you to actually use the card. You just have to simply discard them. The other one is tracking. When you discard a card to choose a space based on one of the two cards you have in front of you to determine if the anomaly is in one of those specific locations. Are you in this location with the wrench? And they'll say, yes, okay, now you know. That will cost you a card. And then moving, of course. From now on, after doing the first move, if you were to move from another, one location to another, so for instance, if I move from this red location over to this green one, I would move this red card down, I would put this at the bottom of the deck, and I would take a new location, a new location icon, and place it in front of me, indicating a new location. So you're always going to have two cards in front of you after your first move. Additionally, if you want, you can take any special actions as a student. But remember, after you've taken one action, it's the anomaly's turn. They can choose to take theirs. But let's go over a couple of these. So for instance, in the student's hand, if uh, they wanted to, they can simply use their action cards. And it tells you in the top left what the student's actions are, and the bottom right what the anomaly's actions are. So in this case, the student could use a stim pack, which lets them move faster, or they can go ahead and use the sensor, which lets them place these sensor tokens on the board to track the anomaly when they move on to specific locations. If at any point in time you use any of these special actions from the cards, you have to give the card that you used to the anomaly, which will then give the anomaly an ability that they can go ahead and use on their turn in addition to their basic actions. So anyway, the student moved from this red area to this green area, and the anomaly now knows the student is in a specific location based on the spaces on the board. So now it's the anomaly's turn. The anomaly can go ahead and choose to use one of these or not. So they can say, oh, I'll go ahead and pass, or they can use one. Now, with what's interesting about these is when you, use to, you choose to use them. So, for instance, if the student chose to use on their previous turn a stim pack, this anomaly would gain this specific card, which gives them a specific ability if they chose to use it. On the anomaly's turn, if they do choose to use one of their tokens, they're going to get to choose to do a basic action and or a special action, which are right here. Basic actions are either to move or feed. Moving, it lets you move from any space to any adjacent space, and it costs one token. Feeding allows you to basically suck the life force off of the space you're at. Thusly, you have to reveal yourself. So you'll go, oh, I'm here, and I'm going to feed. If any student is present, the students will lose one health, moving down this tracker here. If no students are present, but there is one of these fuel canisters, the fuel canister will get burned up, and the anomaly will have fed. The reason why they want to feed is because at the end of the round, if the anomaly does not feed, they are going to take damage. Additionally, when the anomaly successfully feeds, if they are at low health, they can actually heal up one. So feeding is very important for the anomaly to do. Additionally, they have special actions like teleporting around the board, scent, which is finding players, possessing players to do what you want them to do, overloading the board with electricity, and of course, evolving. When you discard two evolve abilities, 
uh, to evolve cards as the anomaly, you get to choose one of these six specific tokens, which are over here, flipping them over and doing a specific action uh, for the rest of the game or specific passive ability. So it makes you a little stronger as the game goes on. Every board will show you the special student actions and the special anomaly actions. So that is the basic idea. Once the anomaly chooses to use one of these tokens or not, uh, then it will be the student's turn. Now remember, as the anomaly, you can choose to use a basic action and or use a special action when discarding one of these tokens. Back to the students, they can go ahead and, the students can then go ahead and choose which student is going to use their cards, and then they're going to go ahead and either discard them um, to be used as a basic action, or flip them over and use it as a special action. Students can use specific abilities to do damage, like for instance a ranged attack. Uh, zero is the range in which is the space you are in. So for instance, let's say that yellow or orange was in this area here and nobody knew it and that the anomaly was over here. If the student used a range attack that had zero to one range, this is zero and any space adjacent is going to be one. So I can say, oh, I want to do one damage to this area here. If the anomaly is there, the anomaly will take damage, thusly reducing its health as well. Anomaly can gain health by sucking, feeding on students and canisters where students are not going to gain health. And that is the basic idea of the game. After the anomaly runs out of their tokens and the students only have two cards collectively, then the round will end. You're going to flip over one of these radiation tokens and place it based on where it says. Players will take damage if they are on the radiated areas. And players are going to draw back to their hand size and the anomaly will gain their tokens back. And the round will start once again with the students. The first player or players to get to the zero are the players that lose. And the other players are going to win or player, depending on if you're the anomaly or the students. Another thing to note is if you get to the last spot before you die, you will then get a replenishment of either action tokens if you're the anomaly or cards if you are the students. And this can happen more than once depending on if you can heal or not. And that is the basic idea for Anomaly. Anyway, let's come up and talk about it. So before we get into my review of Anomaly, let's talk about a couple caveats because I didn't go over a lot of the cards and abilities of the characters. So obviously, whenever a player plays a card, a student plays a card, as its action, not as a basic action, those cards will go to the Anomaly. And the Anomaly will then have the option to use those cards as well as a basic action when playing their action tokens. So there's quite a few different abilities that students have. And whenever students want to do damage to the anomaly, they have to play cards because otherwise all they can do is try and figure out where the anomaly is or simply move to avoid the anomaly from going to the space they are in. They have strike, which is a range of zero to one and does a damage. Double strike, which is the same thing, but attacks twice. Far strike, which is zero to two and damages one. And then you have bludgeon and stun baton, which are a range of zero, meaning the space you are on, which does a damage of two or three. Stimpaks, which lets you move either one or two zones away. Bait, which will allow you to place, uh, choose a zone from zero to one space away and force the anomaly to move one space closer to you guys at the closest possible path. Which, in combination, there's also trap, where you can place trap tokens down on the board. And if at any point you think that the anomaly is in that specific location, you can trigger those traps. And those traps are going to be played on your mini board, allowing you to do damage to the anomaly. The last one is sensor, where you'll place certain sensor tokens, and there's only three of them, on the board, which means that whenever the anomaly goes through those locations or on those locations, they will have to let you know that they pass through or are on them. Very, very useful. The anomaly has their actions as well. Overload, which is going to be placing electricity or exploding the electricity on the board. Evolve, allowing you to discard two cards to gain a specific passive evolution. Possess, allowing you to uh, reveal yourself as the anomaly target a specific location you're on and see if the students are there and if they are you can then use their abilities against them teleport letting you move anywhere on the board and sent choosing a specific number of zones and then asking players if anybody is in those zones now the more you choose the more likely you are to find students but you're still not going to be as pinpointing them down as if you just chose one or maybe even two spaces the evolutions, such as echolocation, students must reveal their position when they use any action that isn't move, track, or trap. <laughs> Very useful. Conduit, the anomaly may feed on electricity tokens as other power sources or the fuel sources. Additionally, when tokens are activated by overload, it may choose to feed off of the electricity strike that would otherwise damage its zone. In both cases, feeding on lightning reveals the anomaly's position. So basically it makes lightning even more powerful for the anomaly. And we'll look at one more, phasing. As part of its normal movement, the anomaly may move across an adjacent shuttle bay to the zone on the other side. 
giving you a lot more movement. And there's six total different evolutions, and you're likely not going to get all six when you're playing, because the game will end just before that. I would probably see, say we would get maybe two or even three of them. But those do definitely progress your ability to win the game as the anomaly. Anyway, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Get to zero health, you lose, and it, the teams share health. So no matter how many students you have, this little tracker here is still going to have the same amount of health line as the anomaly will. Uh, there are some really interesting aspects to the game. Let's talk about theme first. The theme is your students trapped in a laboratory that is now quarantined, and there is an alien identity, uh, or uh, identity, I don't know, <laughs> is going around the space station looking for you and trying to defeat you. And you are trying to trap it, you're trying to shoot it from range, you're trying to avoid getting too close up and personal with it because it has the opportunity to heal itself and feed off of you, and that's very dangerous. So if you're able to basically position yourself in a way that will make you hit it back and forth until the point where it dies, you're going to win. But the anomaly is going to be tricky, and it's going to be smart choosing when to use cards, how to use them, and how to man manipulate their passive abilities in order to trap the students one by one, thusly controlling where they are and how they move. And if that happens, the students are very likely to lose. All these little player boards are very nice. Everybody's basically hidden from everybody else. Nobody knows where the other players are, except for when they reveal themselves on the board. And so you have to be careful because sometimes you can hurt each other as opposed to the anomaly. Or the anomaly might think you're a certain place and you're not. Now the anomaly has a lot more knowledge as to where you might be as opposed to where the, it might be. And it is able to move rather quickly, especially if you give it teleport cards. Now there's two things. One, the anomaly itself is actually trying to kill you as quickly as it can, because every turn it doesn't feed, it's going to take damage and it will eventually die if it does not keep feeding on you. So you can kind of play cat and mouse with this thing, trying to avoid it as long as possible. As well as students want to try and kill it as fast as they can, because every round the board is going to get radiated and people will start taking damage if they're on these radiated spaces when the round ends, until eventually the entire board is filled. So. Uh, basically, the anomaly will start being able to feed over and over on you because you want to try and avoid staying in radiated spaces. So it kind of is this weird balance of when do I want to attack, when do I want to hide, how can I avoid being uh, my, my location being known, and you are able to do that, but to a certain extent the anomaly has you kind of pinpointed in a lot of different instances. I thought this game was going to be a little bit more a little bit more like, oh no, is he going to find me, is he not? But in this case, the game is actually aggressive on both sides. You just want to have the best tactical advantage with the cards you're using to try and defeat the anomaly. And the anomaly is trying to basically position you guys in a way where it's able to constantly feed off of you guys and control the game. It's a fun game. I really enjoyed this game. The artwork is solid. Uh, the theme is really cool as well. It's the first game I've played where everybody is playing it on a hidden movement board, so you have control of your own character, and you're kind of working with people, but you don't know where they are and how, they're gonna, how you're going to cooperate with them. And everything you say to other players is going to be known by the anomaly, so there's no gaminess where you can whisper anything like that. So you're always trying to be like, oh, we should go here, I think he's here, and oh, maybe, maybe, maybe not, or maybe she's over on this side, and who knows? And all the while they'll, they're knowing what you're saying and oh i'm all the way across the board they have no idea and i'm just dropping electricity down it can be a little nerve-wracking it can be a little crazy you don't know what's actually going to happen at what point or another and you're always kind of on edge in this game uh I really enjoyed this game. I think for most players who enjoy a hidden movement game that want us to try something a little different, because this one's definitely different than things like The Fury of Dracula or uh, Specter Ops, those type of games where it's just one player that's hidden around the, and everybody else is trying to look for it. This one has a little bit more suspense as to everyone is hidden and you kind of feel isolated, even when you're part of the group of students looking to track down and defeat the anomaly. Uh, the negative things I can say about this game, I suppose, is you're not really sure, as I guess as a student, when to attack and how to attack. You have to learn over a period of games what the best strategy is. And the anomaly can seriously take some damage if they're not careful when utilizing their tokens. You have to be very careful when and how you utilize your cards and tokens because that is really what the game comes down to. If you use things too quickly, if as the anomaly you don't use a basic and an advanced action with the cards when you're using those tokens, it can be very detrimental to you. And then choosing what your evolutions are based on the type of playstyle you have is also important as well. The game can end in a really, really close game or one player can simply steamroll the other depending on how skilled the other players are deducing where players are and when to attack and how to attack. But 
Regardless, I enjoyed my time with this game. I played it at two, three, and four players, and it worked solidly throughout all of them. I prefer to play it with four players and even three. A two player game, not as much, but it does work. Uh, I just like the fact that there's a bunch of other players moving around the board and you're trying to locate them at the same time as the anomaly to try and form this like, cohesive strategy that you can't really do, which makes this game very fun and very unique as to how it is played. If this game sounds interesting to you, go ahead and check out the link down below in the game for Anomaly by Star... Star... What is it called? Starling Games. They did Everdell as well, which is an excellent game. Take a look down below for the game. I think you'll like it.